Hello everyone, a very warm welcome to my weekly update. I've literally just come off a call with Lord Goldsmith, who of course is leading uh, on the government's uh, Kept Animals Bill, uh, which has started its journey through Parliament, so first reading uh, was last week. Um, many things to, to cover in this bill, and it is very broad in what it does, everything from primates to zoo animals to farm animals. But uh, I guess a, a really significant win for the NFU, and don't forget uh, earlier on in the year we had 20,000 uh, of our supporters back an open letter asking for um, much stricter controls, uh, tightening up of the legislation around livestock worrying. And I'm delighted to see that that is featuring in this bill, first time it has been updated since 1953, so incredibly timely. But there are big elements of concern for me in these animal welfare bills. I made it very clear to Lord Goldsmith that as we look to negotiate trade, raising the standards here, you know, the government proudly talks about banning live animal exports when our competitors are allowed to move animals thousands uh, of miles. And the impact assessment, when I asked about the economic impact assessment, you know, that is always looking at the here and now, or the past, not the future. And so there is no reason why actually, you know, live animal exports wouldn't be important, crucially important, crossing that channel going forwards. And of course, the impact assessments of opening up our, our borders to more trade uh, have not been explored. I made the point also, because Lord Goldsmith talked very proudly about, you know, the banning of veal crates that we have had here. We all know the history of the pig industry when we banned stools and tethers. And of course, we just imported stuff that was producing to those very same standards. And so I asked Lord Goldsmith that clearly the DEFRA ambition was to have these higher standards. But how did this fit with the rest of, of government? Because clearly that was not the will of many in government and from the vast amount of, of press that I read, the reporting that is out there, you know, all the talks of liberalisation becoming more competitive. Um, none of this fits and Lord Goldsmith was very apologetic, understood the issues, but this is really, really serious. Otherwise, we will just repeat uh, the lessons that we seemingly have failed to learn from the past. Animal welfare is crucially important. This country has done more. Farmers have done more than just about any other country in the world. We were the first country to legislate on, on animal welfare, but it's got to be fair. So I'll keep you posted, but it is incredibly concerning times. Uh, another challenging aspect, and if I'm honest, the most heart-rending situation is, is health and safety on farm. And Deputy President Stuart Roberts hosted a really important live webinar event uh, earlier in the week, um, very well supported, really encouraging members um, pre-harvest to be looking at on-farm safety. Some pretty heartrending stories out there that were played out. Um, quite simply, we are still killing the same amount of people. We are the one sector that is not improving. So things have to change because we just keep losing lives and that is unacceptable. And those families are then left devastated forever. So things need to change and we all need to act. It is on, on other matters, uh, political, of course, the G7 summit uh, starting today and continuing throughout next week, where supposedly the principles of the Australian UK trade deal will be signed off. So we wait to see what happens there. I don't think everything uh, as is the case with trade, is, is sorted. So it'll be intriguing to see if the principles can be signed off. And fantastic to see that the South West uh, has uh, really engaged with all MPs uh, across the region. Obviously, this has been hosting, hosted in Carlis Bay and Cornwall. And I know all MPs were sent a wonderful pack of wildflower seed that is produced uh, on farm and also some Cornish daffodil bulbs. So a, a really nice gift and a, you know, a great piece of, of work showcasing uh, all that we do on farm. Um, my hopes for the G7, well, wouldn't it be great if sustainable food production and climate change were brought together and, and farmers uh, pitched as the solution in all of this. We really do need a very grown-up conversation, global conversation about how we produce our food. At the moment, what I see here and what I see actually with uh, 
other European countries is decisions, political decisions that actually are going to lead to a lot less food production here. A lot rests on Henry Dimbleby's uh, report. I have concerns uh, about that. I feel it is sort of another one that is in danger of going down the anti-meat, anti-dairy um, as not being sustainable for the future. Um, you know, we really, really have to up the ante in this area. Meat and dairy are a vital part of a healthy, balanced diet, well recognised by dietitians across the world for the role that they play. Um, so there's just never a dull moment in this job, as you can imagine. But I just want to make it very clear that we are here for each and every one of you. Um, the Call First team always standing ready to deal with any of your concerns. So please do stay well, look after yourselves, and I look forward to speaking to you again next week. Thanks.